Welcome back. Thank, good so to be here. So glad to have you good with me. Here. It's always good to have you with me, brother. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah. I, you're yeah. like my, my, my brother. Every time we get together, it's like family reunion. Yeah, we, yeah. we only have like an hour or two uh, yeah, every no. once a year. You right, know, and I it's, echo it's that. Great. I echo that. I echo that. But you're a good friend, and, yeah. and uh, I, I tell everybody I want to be just like you and when I grow like up. You. You know? <laughs> faithful, faithful. Well, well, yeah, okay. okay. We won't go there. All right. But uh, let's talk about the Bride of Christ. Uh, okay. You know, not... Not from the standpoint of uh, of uh, confusion and controversy that right. the church seems to like to you know to delve into, but uh, let's talk about that relationship. Absolutely, relationship with the Father yeah. through Christ as the bride and the bridegroom. Let's let's just take it from there. Well, at the end of our last uh, session, you mentioned this verse here, which is uh, Revelations twenty two seventeen. Mm. When, and I, I don't teach a whole lot out of Revel. I'm not really an end time preacher. I enjoy that, and I, I appreciate the men that are and women that are called to that. And uh, but I know, you know, I, all I can do is share uh, how he's dealt with me, and and hopefully it'll help somebody, you know. So let's read that verse. It says, uh, Revelations 22:17, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Now, in our previous session, we found out for sure. Uh, Paul said. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ mm. and the church. And he was teaching about husbands, love your wives. And he was drawing that analogy that Jesus is the last Adam, not the second Adam. <laughs> there is no third Adam. You're There's right, no other right. Savior coming. Right. He's the last Adam, and he's really spawned a new species of human on planet Earth. You know, When you get born again, the life that's in you, the spirit that's in you, is no longer from the first man, Adam. It, now it's spawned from the last Adam. And that's, that, I like to say it this way, the life that is in you is not from this planet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's really, you're, you're, it's literally you become a child of God, born yeah. of His Spirit. Yeah. And the life that's in us is spawned from another world. <laughs> you're really a new creation. In fact, if we hold our place right here, yes, a new creation. Uh, you can turn if you want to or just let me read it to you. John 17. I have a hard time on understanding this one in Revelations without understanding what Jesus said to us in John 17. And he was praying and, you know, this is what we call oh, this yeah. the high priestly yeah. prayer of Jesus. Yeah. It's right. one of my favorites because this is, it's, we're real near the cross here. And this is like one of his final prayers to the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, boy, we got God the Son praying to God the Father. Father. If there was ever a prayer that was answered, uh, yes. it's this one, you know. <clears throat> and one of the things he says talking about us is uh, here in verse... Uh, Let's start in John 17, 15. He says, I pray not that thou should take us them. And he's talking about believers. Those of us, not only at one point, he says, I'm not just praying for these here today, but for all that shall believe on me through their word. Well, that's us. We've all, sure. one way or another, believed on him through the words of these men. Mm -hmm. So he says, they are, he says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should deliver, keep, excuse me, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, evil one. Now here's the one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Mm. See, the spirit that was on the inside of him, when he was conceived in the womb of Mary, uh, uh, that, that, he was the first man since Adam fell that came into this world with that life of God in his spirit. Now, everybody said, well, every, every baby's born alive. Well, every baby is born Spiritually dead, dead, the truth yes, of the matter. Yes, that yes. spiritual death that came into Adam yes, and Eve yes. was passed down generation to generation. And that's why Satan thought he had man locked up in a box. He, mm -hmm, you know, you, mm -hmm. pastor, my, my pastor is Dave Roberson, and I heard him say one time, you know, he says, you know, you can't get a savior from a spiritually dead gene pool. <laughs> if that's, isn't that a good, good way to say it? That's a good way to say and it. And so Satan's looking at all of humanity and he's saying, well, there is no way. Every, everyone born now is born with that sin nature. So, that, you know, there is no Savior possible. He never dreamed, I don't think, the enemy ever dreamed that God would become a man. Yeah. yeah. That a man could be born yeah. with yeah. the very life of God sure. on the inside of him. See, sure. Jesus was in the world, but yeah. he was not of this yeah. world. Yeah. When we get born again, what we, we, he, he plainly says, he's prophesying about us. When we get born again, we're no more of this world than he was. We're in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, it's been hard to develop this mindset that I am really... I'm really an alien from another realm. <laughs> and well, yeah, believes, because of the connotation of alien. Yeah, yeah right. But every believer is, you know. Sure. We're, we, he, he's, uh, these are our earth suits. 
You've got yes. to have, in the same way that we can't send an astronaut into outer space, they, right. can't, they can't go outside the vessel without a space suit. They, right. You can't survive there. Right. Our spirit can't survive here without this earth suit. Yeah. But we're, we look like normal humans. What I mean is we look like the sons of Adam. We, we walk like the sons of Adam. They think we're normal. They think we're of the world, but we're not. We, we are an invading, we are an invading uh, species yes. from another realm yes. sent to rescue all the sons of Adam that we can. Wow. That's why we're here. So that goes all the way back to Abel. It goes, yes, it goes all the way, all the way back to Genesis 1. You know, we're going from right. Genesis to maps, maps. today. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So when I, when I begin to really understand that, uh, and, and you start developing a mindset of, well, okay, I'm on temporary assignment. This earth sure. is not my home. Sure. It starts changing your perspective about, well, you know, how many houses do I need? Yeah. How yeah. many cars yeah. do I, how, yeah. many, how many clothes do I need? Right. Um, as you, uh, as a bride, who more fully understands your husband, yeah, and you're a help me to him, and Jesus being our husband. As I develop more of the con the concept, I am his bride, I am his help me, then my whole life becomes about what he wants. Well, what does he want? He wants the Father's will. See, we've got a whole lost world. At last, I heard we're getting close to eight billion people on planet Earth. Wow. And the truth of the matter is out of eight billion, the tiniest sliver yeah. is truly born again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fields are massive. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. we've got so much work to do. We don't have time for our lives to be about bigger cars and, and bigger houses. I know. And, and he wants us to enjoy life. I mean, sure. I love my family. I love my grandkids, you yeah. know. Well, you said he came, that we have an life, life. life more. But we can never lose sight of the fact we're not of this world. Right. So now, with that thinking in mind, we go okay. back over here to Revelations right. again. Because the more I understand that, my source of life, my source of joy, my source of satisfaction does not come from the things of this world anymore. Right, right. I understand. I'm, I've never been there yet, but I'm from a realm that's going to last forever. There's going to be a, and really it's not, you know, we always say we're going to live in heaven. No. no. There's going to be a new heaven and a new, new earth. earth. And yeah. that's really my home. That's sure. where I'm going to be. Sure. And we, so, we, don't, we don't even understand that concept of a new heaven and a new earth. Not really. I just, because we do it in relation to what we have now. A fallen earth, yeah. a, a sinful man. Yeah. A friend of mine, Pastor Jim, he, he teaches a sermon. You know, you'll see a beautiful red sunset. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he'll go, you know, it's only that way because we live in a fallen world. And I go, what? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But if we think that's pretty, and yeah. it is, it's yes, pretty. Yes. He says, think what it's going to sure, be. Sure, When we sure. live in a world that God originally intended. Intended, intended. <sighs> yeah. We haven't seen beauty yet. No. Dude. We haven't no, seen beauty no, yet. No. We don't know how he originally made the planet. And we won't even remember what. what nah, it'll be. It, it, but what, what this verse, the Spirit. Now, this says, is the capital S. This is the, the and Holy Spirit. it is, yes. You this can is the say Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, yeah. Because it says, and the bride. So and I'm the bride. always not talking about my human spirit. Here. Right. I'm the bride. Right. So the more I understood that I'm not of this world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to, uh, why hasn't the Lord already come back? Why hasn't he already come? Yeah. It plainly tells you he's waiting for that precious Precious. fruit of the earth. There's, there's ah, more people yes, to be yeah, saved. Right. And he, we're on assignment here for that very mission. Sure. But as I mature in the concept of a bride, serving, well, not really serving, helping, that's better, helping my husband, fellowshipping with him. Yes, yes. Then the less this world has appealed to me. My life is not about this world anymore. My wife is about the mission. Yes. And the fruit that can be garnered. Now, that doesn't mean we're all evangelists. I mean, there's many parts. To, we're also called the body of Christ. There's many parts of the body. My liver does not do what my elbow no, does. No, But no. I'm really glad my yeah. liver does right. what it does. Right. You know? right. And right. I'm glad my elbow right. does what it does. Yeah. Well, we, we all find our part. But when it says, and the spirit and the bride say, say come. come. There is, Dick, you have it in you. Yes. I have it in me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Lord, I know we're on assignment, yeah. but I'm but looking forward, forward to that day. Yes, yes. I yes. am looking forward to that day yeah. when he comes. Yeah, he even says, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come quickly. Yeah. Yes, he says it right here, a little further yes. down. He says, right. surely I come quickly in yes. verse 20. You know? Yes. And let's read the whole verse, though. Sure, so go ahead. It says, the Spirit, this is Revelation 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. 
and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, see, let him take the water of life freely. That's why we're here. Yeah. But even while we're here, there's a crying from my heart. Yes. And there's a crying yes. from the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Even so, come. Come. Come quickly. I don't want to I don't want to go while there's still and I, this is the Father. He doesn't want this to end while there's one more soul to That's be saved. right. That's right. I'm I, I, now I'm convinced that the the Father he was holding out salvation to the last breath of Hitler. I don't know what happened on sure. his deathbed. I sure. don't know what happened. But the Father's like that. He, it says He's not willing, it's not His will, that any should perish. No. no. So I don't want it to end really any sooner than He wants it to end. Even Jesus said, those, that's in the timing of the Father. Father. Even the Son doesn't right. know. You know? Right. But right on the other hand, that doesn't take away from that cry on the inside sure. of me and that cry that's on the inside of sure. you. Oh, I'm looking forward to yes, when He comes. Yes. I'm looking forward to that yes. new heaven. Yes. I'm looking forward to that new yes. earth. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Where is the bride today? The way I would answer it, everywhere that He is. Yes. Yes. Everywhere yes. that He is. When you yes. find yes. people that are sold out to Him, sure. People that sure. love Him, sure. that have submitted to Him the same way that a wife is to submit sure. to a husband. Sure. Sure. That's where that's where you find the bride is with Him. Wow. Wherever He is. You're going to find the bride, because the two have become one flesh. This is this brings up. Okay, <laughs> we got a lot of time. Oh, yes. We're doing real yes, good. We're doing All right. For the body of Christ also, in the earlier in the earlier one that we read in Ephesians, it yeah. says the two, two shall, be shall become one flesh. I'll never forget the day it dawned on me. And again, this was training in the early days. I like to say it uh, this way. These were in the days when money was staying away from Sue and I in great abundance. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, it was staying away well, in great and, abundance. And, and, and really, the, God had to do that to you so to that you, you got rid of that God. You know, why, you know why the manna? Do you know why? He plainly tells you in Deuteronomy chapter 8, I think it is, yeah. why, why, why he had to put, yes. he says, that you may learn. learn. That man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, and we had to learn that in a practice. It's one thing to, sure. to say that. It's one sure. thing to learn it in Bible college yeah. or, or at Victory, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, some kind of school. It's another thing when he yes. says, "We'll step out and trust me." Sure, sure, sure. And it was so daily. I mean, there were days. I remember there, more than once, there was nothing. The refrigerator, there was nothing. Oh, yeah, you had more days than you had money. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> all the time. Or pay. And, 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 and so, you know, well, well what do we do? I and, remember, and we, yeah. I remember more than once, we would set out the dinner plates, yeah. set out the forks and knives, set out the glasses. And then sit and wait. And sit and wait. And yeah. I, I have testimony, I mean, time oh, after time. One time yes. somebody says, hey, we got too much Kentucky Fried Chicken. Could you all use some Kentucky Fried Chicken? <laughs> oh, I think we could work that in, bring it on over, you know. <laughs> so one time we, we did like that and somebody brought us a whole meal. That they, they said, we just had you on your heart. On, God had you on our yeah, heart today. Yeah. We made meatloaf and whatever and yeah. just brought in this whole meal. Yeah. But it was so daily that I coined this expression back then. I said, okay, at the end of the day, now, I didn't really say this, but it was like, we did not die today. Surely we will die tomorrow. <laughs> it was just like that day by yeah, day yeah, by day. Yeah. What was he doing? He was doing exactly with us yeah, yeah. the same thing he did with Israel. We had to come to the place where we did not. Now, God is not against savings. He's not against preparation. He's not against 401ks. But you do somehow have to come to that place if you're going to follow him. You have to learn to trust Him. And we did. It was a slow process. I say all the time, I would not take now for what all we learned sure. during those early years. Sure. But at the same time, I say, <laughs> I, don't want I to go hope back. I never have to learn those again. <laughs> I don't ever want to make those same, have to make those same mistakes yeah, again. Yeah. Well, it's very much like a husband and wife. You know, you sure. fall in love, but then you get married. Yeah. And things change. And what, what I mean is... Uh, you know, physical attraction is great and emotions are great, but marriage is really sure. is a, a lot more than all of that, okay? And once you get to be 68, uh, the physical things don't matter Matters so much, much anymore, you know? <laughs> and, but well, at boy, least the physical appearance does. Yes, yeah. yes. And the, but the, uh, that bond, you know? Yes. I love my wife more today. Sure, oh, sure, sure. And I loved her at age 13. Sure. You know? Sure. But I love her more today. I love Jesus more today. 
I trust him. Hey, I recently went through this. We, we had something, and I've been following the Lord now for a long time. It's been over 30 years. And, and we had some, uh, some things happen where financially, here recently, within the last two years, financially, you should be worried, you know. I mean, <laughs> in the natural realm. And I kept, I would think, shouldn't I be worried? <laughs> <laughs> and, my, you know, your own soul can, can be sure. trained. And it's like my own soul spoke back to me, whatever that part is, and it says, oh, he's already delivered us about 10,000 times. He'll deliver us again. He'll deliver us again. Just go ahead and get some sleep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've become a wife that trusts my husband. My husband. Yes. And yes. sometimes he says things that yes. he wants yes. me to do, yes. and I, I, still I go, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. But I've learned, not just, oh, and I love the Bible. You know I love the Bible. But I... Really, the walk with Christ is much more than that. Oh, sure. I have learned through following Him and, and uh, uh, <laughs> Him. I don't know how else to say it. When I would mess up, I have messed up a lot. Uh, I've uh, made mistakes, you know, where I sometimes I thought it was Him and it wasn't. You know what? He fixed it. Sometimes he told me, and it was him, and I just flat didn't obey it. I hate to yeah, admit that on yeah, television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. I, di I didn't obey him, and then later I'd repent. Yes. You know, he'd take me back again. I always so want to be that kind yeah. of husband. Yeah, see? yeah. That's who I want to be to my. I want to be that kind of father to my children. I want to be that kind of grandfather right. to my to my grandchildren. But when it says the spirit and the bride say, "Come," well, yes, we're looking forward to that. I'm, I'll come, Lord Jesus. You know, but if there's another, see what happens is your own heart. Yes. It starts becoming like his heart. Right. right. And you, you, you can't drive anywhere. You don't see the homeless. You don't see right. poverty. You can't turn on the news, you know, with a, oh, oh yeah. you know, yeah. you know, he would save every ISIS fighter. I, I, don't, know if it's, oh, sure. I don't know if it's sure. okay for me to say that. Yeah. If God has his way, he would save everyone. He'd rather save them with the gospel. Right. If right. he could. Right. You know, he, he loves everyone. He died for each and every yeah. one of them. Right. And he's trying to raise up a body that is mature enough to submit to him, yeah, right. that will trust him, right. that if he says, do this, you, you don't argue with him. You don't, it's not all about you and what all can you give me? I mean, what kind of right. wife is that? Right. You right. know, right. I don't want a better, I want a better car, you know, no, 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 no. It's yeah. never, never enough, you know? Oh, no, no, that's right. I do, I do not want to be that kind of wife, no. you know? No, no. And he's a good provider no. anyway. Now, I, so let me say the rest of the story, all these years later, now, we don't have millions of dollars, and I'm not against that even. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, but I, I tell you the truth. We're better off today than we've ever been in our life, financially. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and if tomorrow it's all gone, I'm going to sleep like a baby. Yeah. I've, yeah. Got, I've got a husband. Yep. I've got a provider. Right. And even if I messed up is what caused it, he'll yep. still take care of me. Yep. He'll yep. still provide for me. Yep, yep. It is the best marriage yeah. on earth, you yes. know. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I like being Eve. It took yeah. a while, my hairy leg Gary be Eve. What? But I like it. Yeah. And the more I understand it, and then I understand, I see what kind of a husband he is back to me. Sure. Then that helps me really be sure. a, a husband. It doesn't make me less manly. It makes right. me more manly. Right. Real right. men love right. Jesus. Right. Right. Real men love Jesus. Right. You know, and they're going to follow him. He is. Yeah. He is the ultimate man's man, as far as I'm concerned. You know. You know, Gary. There's a. Um, there's a, uh, uh, a very strong thread. You know, I, I remember as you were, you were giving a little bit of your testimony that, uh, and I, I only throw this in because it, I think it, it applies. Uh, I, lived, <coughs> I, lived, I lived in a town uh, about, oh, 35 or 40 miles from where my dad lived. Mm -hmm. And my dad and I were both in the same business. We were both in the paint business. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I, that's how I got into the paint business because of, of some of the things that he showed me. Mm -hmm. But uh, after we were married uh, and we were living in this other town, uh, like you, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I thought, man, I, I've got it. I've got a college education. Mm -hmm. I've got this. I've got a wonderful wife. And we, you know, we didn't have any children yet. And we're, we, you know, we were looking for things to go. But it seemed the more that, that, that I, I, I did that, the, the, the less the less money we had for the time that we had to live each month. Right, right. right. <clears throat> but my dad had a little little thing that he used to do. He always, toward the end of the month, he sometime during the end of the month, he'd come and visit us. Mm -hmm. On his way, of course, he was going to make a business call. Mm -hmm. Of course, right? Mm -hmm. But he'd stop and say, and, and, and then he'd always ask my wife, you know, he'd always come around about lunchtime. 
he'd ask my wife, you know, you know what I'd really like? He says, I'd really like some, some this or that or this or that. Mm -hmm. And he knew we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. I'll go get something. Mm -hmm. So he goes down to the store and he comes back with these two big bags of groceries that'll keep us to the end of the month and maybe even into the next month. Mm -hmm. And he did that, you know, he did that for, oh, I don't know how long he did it. It, it doesn't matter. But that was what you were saying. There's always, God is always providing. Always. He, if, if he doesn't provide as a husband, he provides like a father. Yes, yes. So that, uh, that it, it's always there, that source is always there. It's who he is. Yeah. So the reason I mention that is because I know there's people watching us that are going through struggles right now. They can't, it, you know, we can say that with, with, with a surety because of the world the way it is. The world is, is a, in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. And the, the world is struggling for, you know, for, to, to try to bring things, right. you know. Right. Uh, how does one get to be like where you were so that they can have that same testimony. They're, 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 they, they maybe never made a, uh, a decision, even though they're married. They mm. married, never made a decision to support one another mm. or confide in one another. Just take a few minutes and bring them into that, uh, uh, that point of life. So we're going to do a, a marriage counseling here. Yes, three right. Okay. You've got five yeah. minutes to do right. it. <laughs> I tell everyone, I love love. Love is a wonderful thing. Uh, I think it's more important that you fall head over heels and like with the one that you're going to spend your life with. You need to like your spouse. You need to be friends. Uh, love is wonderful. Trust has got to be part of the marriage. I'll tell you where I think it starts is sharing. Mm. There's so little communication between husband and wife. And I also find in modern times, the competition. One is, all, they're always trying to be right, okay? Uh, and in order to be right, they're almost always kind of putting the other one down. Do you ever, you know, it's like competition. Yes, yes. Uh, that, that, that is not the way Christ is at all. Uh, he is the most loving, forgiving, accepting, but he does not change, okay? He is right. <laughs> If there's any change, it's going to be me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but let's get back to helping the sure. marriages, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I'm listening. I'm trying to listen because I want to give the right answer. Sure. You know what? I, you know what I heard? You need to pray for your spouse. Uh huh. You 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 need to pray for him. You know what I usually get when we're having a counseling session? You know, it's gotten bad, and now they need counseling. You know, the bitterness. Yes. The unforgiveness, the strife has gotten to the point. They can't even bring themselves to pray for the other person. Mm. Well, bitterness, if you, if you get full of bitterness, you talk about an open door for the enemy yeah, yeah. to bring destruction to the house. Sure. You, you know, we're, uh, a verse that says, be tenderhearted yes. and kind yes. one to another. Yes. And they'll be that way with other church members. Of course. They'll be that way with the neighbors. You can't help it. But with each other, it's like, ah, you know, yeah. it's like always looking for the tiniest little flaw, you know. Pray for one another. I'm, I'll go ahead and t I don't know how else to tell the story but this one. How do you get rid of bitterness and unforgiveness? Uh, many years ago when I was first starting to walk with the Lord and I'm reading the Gospels for really the first time in my life as a Christian, uh, I come to that verse in Mark uh, chapter 11, where it says, if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. And immediately, I thought of this couple that I had ought against, a real ought against. I mean, in my mind, they had done terrible things to me. And I thought of them as I read that, and I heard the Lord say, you know you're going to have to forgive them, or you're not going to go very far with me. And I said, Lord, <laughs> there is nothing in me that wants to forgive them. Nothing. Wow. He said, well, you're going to have to if you want to go very far with me. And I go, well, I want to go far with you. <laughs> but there's nothing in me that wants, even want, Lord, what they did to me was terrible. Sure. I don't want to forgive them. Well, over the next hours, days, I couldn't get away from it. It just kept coming up. <laughs> and he's going, well, you know, you know you're going to have to forgive them. I said, Lord, I, I'm searching, I'm searching. There is not one cell in my body that wants to forgive them. I can't find it anywhere. Then he asked me this wonderful question, and this might be a good one for you, husband or wife. Okay? He says, would you be willing to forgive them if I made you willing? 
ah. to forgive them. My engineering mind had to think about that for a second. Yeah. I'm not willing now, but if you could make me willing, then I guess I would be willing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I said, well, how would that work? How would, what do you mean you make me willing? What, what would I do? Here's the, here's the little instruction he gave me. He said, every time you think of them, just pray and ask me to bless them. That's all. Just say something like, Father, bless them. Wow. You know, it's, there's nothing in me wanted to. But I want to go on with him. I don't really care much about forgiving sure. them. <laughs> right, right, right. But I want to go on with him. It, so I'm thinking, okay, every time I think of him, Dick, have you ever tried not to think of something? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying, I'll speed this up. Yeah. So I'm trying not, not to think of it. Well, I, of course, I'd, I'd, so I'd pray. And the first time, first time I said it like this, Father, I'm asking you to bless them. And you know I don't mean it because <laughs> I didn't want to be a hypocrite. Right, right. But you know what? Every time I would think of him, I would just pray that simple prayer. Okay, Father, bless him. And he began tearing down somehow that bitterness and unforgiveness in me, just like a, a, a structure made out of bricks began to crumble. And my heart started getting a little more tender. And I, yes. remember, I remember one time I said, well, I guess I don't want anybody to go to hell. All right, Father, you can really bless him. And I guess I mean it. <laughs> Over the course of time, though, he changed my heart. Sure. Sure. The bitterness was all yeah, gone. Yeah, that yeah. same couple today lives yeah. three blocks from my house. Wow. And when I'm gone on a trip like this, if anything goes wrong at my mother's house, they're the they're ones the that go, to go fix it. Praise Jesus, he'll Praise make lemonade out of there. You got your answer, folks. You got your answer. <laughs> do that with your husband. Yeah, Just say, Father, bless him. Yeah. Do that with your wife. Father, bless her. Let it yeah. start there. Yeah. Yeah. See what he does. Gary, come back. <laughs> it's, all, it's always so blessed to have you on my set. I mm. just enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, Radiant Light Broadcasting is here. There's a number on the bottom of your screen. If you've uh, been touched by this, give us a call, let us know. If there's some way we can help you, we'll be glad to do that also. Bless you and we'll see you another broadcast, Focus on Faith.